From newborn to big kids, so many people have questions about what safe sleep in the car seat looks like. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through my ABCDs of what to do to ensure your kiddo is breathing easy, so you are too. Let's start with the basics. Car seats are not designed for sleep. They're designed to protect our children in the event of a car crash. However, we know that when kiddos get in the car, they tend to doze off to dreamland. So I wanna ease your mind about what this looks like and when to be worried and when to not. Let's start with A. A is for airway. It's critically important that our child's airway is open so that they can breathe while they're positioned in the car seat. Here's where it differs if your child has neck control or doesn't have neck control. When you have a newborn baby, they're unable to physically hold their heads up. We have to do that for them, right? They're a little itty bitty squish. So the car seat is designed to properly protect them in a crash when you install it correctly, you use your proper harnessing techniques, and it's also designed to be at the correct recline angle so that their head is held back and their airway is open. Let me give you a little bit more context. A newborn baby's trachea is about the size of a straw, like this one. We've gotta keep that air easily flowing through that straw, like this. Any kinks in the straw, or a kink in the neck would cause the baby's airway to be cut off. This is when we worry about safe sleep in car seats or just unsafe positions in general. We don't wanna see our newborn babies without neck controls, chins going down towards their chest. That's what puts a kink in the straw. That's what would cut off their airway. So if they're falling asleep and their head position is this way or this way, or even if it's down and to the side a little bit, that's completely safe. Nothing to worry about there. Again, assuming your installation and harnessing are done correctly too. Now, once your kiddo gets bigger and is able to sit up unassisted, they now have neck control. So you can breathe a little easier knowing that in the car seat, they are able to lift their head up should they get in an uncomfortable position or if they have any trouble breathing. That's really unlikely to happen for our older kiddos. The reality is their airway is open. They're able to move their heads and necks around. You don't need to do anything to hold their head in place, to prop it upright. Please don't actually. We'll get to that when we talk about letter D. Let's move on to letter B. B is for brakes. Anytime your child is in their car seat out of the car, obviously this applies to the time when you're using an infant car seat, we want them to be removed from that car seat. As I said, your car seat is not a sleeping device. So anytime you're outside of the car, remove your kiddo from the car seat. Now I know you're looking at the screen and saying, Michelle, what about a stroller? Is my kid allowed to be in a stroller? So yes, many of our infant car seats will pop into an approved stroller and those are at the correct recline angle to keep that airway open and their head back. Even in strollers though, you wanna take them out really regularly. And remember, anytime in a stroller, always fully and tightly buckled, it keeps their body in that safe position and that head back and airway open. Brakes also need to happen in the car. All of us, yes, you included, should be getting out of your seatbelt, the car, moving your body around, get that oxygen flowing about every two hours. For our youngest babies, I would do it even more often than that. Next up is letter C. C is about control. I say all the time, control the controllable. And what you can absolutely control to keep your kiddo safe in the car in the event of a crash and to keep them safely breathing is that you have a proper installation of your car seat that includes the recline angle, that you've made the harness fit adjustments to be specifically fitted to your child's body. I'm talking about shoulder strap height, crotch buckle position, insert use, to name a few. And then that, that harness is nice and tight. These are critically important factors no matter the age of your child, but even more important if you have a kiddo that doesn't yet have neck control. We can't possibly wrap up the ABCDs of safe sleep in car seats without talking about what you can't do. D is for don't do it. And first up is don't add any aftermarket products. Please hear me say this loud and clear. 
Many of the retailers are gonna throw things at you on the internet, on the end cap of aisles to try to convince you that you need to buy them. If it didn't come with your car seat, do not add it. It can be incredibly dangerous for you to add products like this around your baby's head. It could slip back behind the child's head and cause their head to go forward. That's that chin to chest position that I've shared with you is incredibly dangerous because it could cut off the airway. So no, no to these things. The other thing that I see some people doing either purchasing these or rigging a way to do it in car seats is for our bigger kiddos, they're using these head straps to hold the head back. Heads are supposed to move. They need to be able to move in a car crash. If you use one of these, you risk internal decapitation. And I'm using that word intentionally because I want it to scare the crap out of you. Don't buy these things. Don't hold your kid's head back. Don't rig something to keep their head back. If they are uncomfortable and they have full neck control, they will pick up their head and move it. The same way as if you fell asleep in the car and your head fell forward or it fell to the side, you would pick it up and move it so you could safely and freely breathe. You can teach your child how to fall asleep in a more comfortable position. So one of the strategies that I recommend is using a large teddy bear stuffed animal, stuffed dog like this one, and simply have your child bear hug it and lay their head right on top of the stuffed animal. That's one solution for them to keep their head a little bit more upright, just if it makes them more comfortable. Remember, it's not unsafe as long as they have neck control. The other thing that you can teach your kids to do is look up at the ceiling as they fall asleep. This is a strategy that we especially like to use for our kids that are in booster mode because in order for that seatbelt to properly protect them, it's got to be in the right place on their body. So looking up at the ceiling helps them to stay in that upright position in the event of a car crash so the seatbelt can do its job. We know your child will fall asleep in the car and frankly, we kind of hope that they do sometimes so that we can enjoy that peaceful ride or eat that secret snack. But you want to do it knowing that they're resting safely. I hope this video brought you some peace of mind about safe sleep in car seats. If it did, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, we have so much more, and check out the description below for more resources. I'll see you in the next one.